What is energy management? So in today's day and age, we have put all our focus on managing time. We have so many things that we're juggling between family, our careers, our home lives, our extended family, our children, our children's social lives, our own social lives. There are so many things that come into play. And ultimately what we're doing is we are investing in something that isn't giving back to us. When you think about it, would we invest in a stock market that didn't give back to us? So why are we doing the same thing when it comes to time? Everyone has the same 24 hours in the day. It's the same for Justin, myself, for Oprah, for Elon Musk, for Jeff Bezos. Everybody has that same 24 hours. But when we shift the focus to managing energy and not managing time, this is a renewable source that can grow. It can actually give back to us. And time ultimately ends up becoming obsolete right? If we had all the time in the world, but no energy at the end of the day, we have nothing. So what we want to do is to teach you how to have all the energy that you need to accomplish anything that you want. So it's awesome. I love that. Like I want all the energy in the world to be able to do everything that I want to do. So how do we do it? And that's the biggest thing. And I'm just going to share a screen here with you guys really quick, because over this whole experience that we're going to be engaging in together, we're going to be talking about a couple concepts. And the first one is that of HRV. You've probably heard a lot of people talking about HRV and basically like, what is it? There's a lot of hype around it, but it's something that's been around for really being studied for the last 30 years. And if we take a look at this now, everyone's like, what the heck Anybody is that? Anybody seen Grey's Anatomy? The Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. If we end up looking like this, we flatlined and we're no longer here. We no longer have any energy. And that's where a lot of us feel. But what these are, is these are our heartbeats. And these are called R waves. And what HRV is measuring is it's measuring ultimately the variance in those heartbeats. So key point here, if we have a resting heart rate of 60 beats per minute, a lot of people would think, oh, our heart is beating at one second intervals. But that's the furthest thing from the truth. It, we are not going at one second intervals. It's actually going every so often, 756 milliseconds, 842 milliseconds, so forth and so on. And they're, the more variant they are, the better. It means our body is reacting and ultimately holding on to stress in a really good way. We are becoming more resilient. We're building capacity. And so the higher our HRV number, okay? The higher that HRV number, the better. So that is the key that we are going to start teaching through this process in which we're truly coming into. And if you take anything from today, it's that you want a higher HRV. And so as we kind of get into this, we start to look at the four quadrants. And what do these four quadrants mean? And it comes back to our energy that we show up with. Stress, as we know, is necessary. We have to have stress. If we don't have stress, we won't grow. We won't develop new things. We won't become better, better versions of us. We won't get stronger. We won't get faster. We won't build bigger businesses. We won't build bigger teams, better families, better people. And so we have to overreach. And by doing that, when we overreach, we start to see that our HRV is going to drop. And that is the signal to us. That is the sign that our body is adapting to stress, but that the stress we're feeling, mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, and you're going to hear more about that from Elise in a second, is that there's something else going on that we need to address. And so for every moment that we spend overreaching, we have to pair it with regeneration. Because that cycle of overreaching and regeneration, overreaching and regeneration allows us to grow our capacity. And when we grow our capacity, we become more resilient, we become more able to perform, and we become ultimately this confident leader that's able to engage in a flow state. And we spend time in this ownership performance state 80% of the time. Imagine if you were confident, joyful, fulfilled, inspired, conscious, aware, leading with that level 80% of the time, what change that would happen. But ultimately, what we end up seeing is that as we continue to spend time in this overreaching space, 
our HRV continues to plummet. We do not make any changes. We continue to have uh, add on things. We continue to do more. Think we need to do more to get more, do more to get more, add more on our plate. And ultimately we end up down here in this burnout stage. And this is actually where 80% of people spend their time. And that's one of the biggest burdens that we run into is that we think by doing more with less of ourself, we're just accomplishing more because we're showing up. But rather, if we bring ownership energy and allow ourselves to overreach, allow ourselves a season, a week, a day that we are really pushing, but then make sure that we spend that equal focus on regeneration to allow ourselves to recover and get back to that level in which we can push again. That's the change. It's if we were to think about it in terms of a race, a lot of people consider life a marathon. And what the marathon runners do, they just keep going and going and going and their pace is slow. And we continue to see that in the way we operate both at home in our personal lives and at work. But if we were to go into and turn it into a sprint, we overreach in a sprint and then we rest and regenerate. But when we perform, we are high energy. We're strong, we're explosive, vibrant, and that's where we want to be. So chances are you're here because you are likely in that overreaching or even potentially that burnout phase, which is okay. And what I want to say is congratulations for being here because you have achieved the first step of awareness. Now, as Justin mentioned earlier, there are four main types of energy, physical, mental, emotional, and purpose energy, or what some may call spiritual energy. Now, the important thing to note here is the, these can also manifest in forms of stress. And our body cannot distinguish between these four. So when you're looking at our HRV, you may have a high emotional stress day, but it may show up the same way as if you have a high stress physical day. Now, the key to know here is that in order for us to build capacity, we have to make sure we're building from the outside in. So we have to make sure that we're building physical capacity and able to grow that mental capacity and then that emotional capacity and ultimately that purpose capacity. But in order for us to really start and build a strong foundation in a sustainable way to build sustainability, we have to start with that purpose energy. This purpose energy is key to being able to build achievable goals. So when we link this, um, our main goals back to this purpose energy, we are a hundred times more likely to find success. So really what we're going to do is we want to start by identifying that purpose energy. When Justin and I set out on this work, we were shocked to find out how many people did not know what their purpose was. They did not have an understanding as to why they were put on this earth. So I'm going to give you an example. We've had clients before who have said, you know what, I'm going to come in and my key goal is to lose weight. When you look at it, at the, ultimately your key goal is not to lose weight. When you connect it back to that purpose, one of their, their key values, one of their core values was family. They actually wanted to lose weight because they wanted to be able to play with their kids. They wanted to be able to live longer. They wanted to be able to make sure that they were living a healthy life so that they could get the best out of it. So you can see that purpose and that physical energy are directly correlated. They're directly tied. But when we took it from losing weight to actually having the goal of spending more time with their family in a qualitative way. That is what got them out of the bed every morning, out of the bed at 6.30 every morning for that 30 minute workout. So next, we are going to help you find and discover your purpose. Click on that next video to continue to own it.